Question. I find Karl Popper stuffy and boring to read. What should I do? Why do you want to read Popper? What are you looking to get out of it? Have you tried reading only specific chapters or sections of chapters that answer a question you're interested in? Have you done a targeted search where you just skim for the parts that will help you with the question you're interested in or the practical problem you're trying to solve? Have you tried just-in-time learning where you learn stuff just when you're going to need it rather than just learning a bunch of stuff in advance for no particular purpose? It's okay to just learn a bunch of stuff if you're having a good time. You know, if you enjoy learning, if you find it interesting, then you, it's fine to just go ahead and learn a bunch of stuff with no immediate purpose for it. But if you're having a bad time, if you're getting bored, if you find it stuffy, then you should change your strategy. Don't just learn a bunch of stuff you're not enjoying for no immediate purpose. Try to figure out what will actually be useful for you. What do you actually want to get out of it right now? And if the answer is nothing, then reconsider your life. Think about, um, maybe you shouldn't be reading Popper. Maybe you should be reading something else. Like, what are the actual problems in your life, and what do you think would actually help with them? Maybe Popper is wrong for you at this time. Now, if you think all philosophers and all intellectuals and all advice is wrong for you, you know, there's probably something going wrong with your thinking. But if you just think Popper is wrong for you at this time and you'd rather read something else, you know, that could be totally fine. If you find books in general don't work for you, that might be okay. Like, maybe you need more feedback. Maybe you need to be, you know learning smaller chunks, and a book is like too much to take in, and you haven't really figured out how to read small sections of books. You don't have enough um, background knowledge and context to fit the small sections into, so you don't understand them when you just read a little section. So in that case, you can focus more on discussion. You can ask more questions. You can write more like very short things, like I think this is one of my problems, or I think this would be a potential solution to this problem, or I brainstormed activities to do today, here's like the 10 I came up with, and then I tried to prioritize them, here's the order I put them in. Does anyone have comments? And you can just do like little things that are part of your life that are things you deal with that you're trying to do well, and try to get feedback or think them through or write them down, and actually like try to start, you know, learning instead of just doing them haphazardly. Try to start thinking them through instead of doing it by intuition. Some people sort of only try to discuss like their biggest, hardest problems, but they have trouble with that because they're not so great at discussion. And if they would actually just talk about a lot of like little practical daily problems, they could get more practice at accepting criticism when it's less threatening and having productive discussions on smaller, less complicated topics. So then they could start to work their way up towards Popper. They could work their way up towards understanding more complicated things, and being able to use ideas in their life. Being able to take an idea and not just say, oh, that sounds nice, I agree with that, but actually figure out how to make it make a difference in their life. And if you start doing that in lots of small cases, then you can build up from there. Another important question with Popper is, do you disagree with him? Are you like the intellectual type who actually has opinions on these things, and you think Popper's wrong? Or are you reading him to like challenge your intellectual views? Or, um, you know, there's other types of people who they haven't really thought through topics like induction and scientific method. And so they've just sort of picked up a bunch of stuff from their culture, some of which is wrong. And if you read Popper like arguing the topic with other philosophers, that might not be the best thing for you if you just have a bunch of stuff you picked up somewhere and you don't really know what your opinions on the matter are. Like, if you have a bunch of pro-induction arguments and you've thought about it a lot and you've written essays on it, then you might find what Popper says really helpful and relevant. But if you just sort of take induction for granted and you barely know anything about it, then Popper's not engaging with that as much or as directly. Like, you could still learn from it, but 
it might not really be the kind of thing you're looking for. You're not used to trying to think those things through, and you're just going to be like, oh, this is so picky. This is, you know, a lot of people, when they encounter arguing at a high level, they think this is so picky, nothing could stand up to this kind of scrutiny. So, like, of course, induction seems wrong because by this hair splitting and trying to argue with every little thing, everything seems wrong. Nothing could ever stand up to that. So if, if you're that kind of person where you're just not used to really high quality knowledge and you have lower standards, then you might not see as much value in Popper. And that's okay, like you can start somewhere else. The important thing is that you have some way in your life, some, some ongoing significant project in your life where you're trying to learn things and make progress and not just in a limited field like art, but in a broader way where you're trying to get better at thinking and better at understanding things, better at making choices, better at running your life, better at being a good person, better at um, finding mistakes and fixing them, better at solving problems. You want to have like part of your life have to do with making progress at those kind of really important things. Um, but there, there's lots of other options for that besides reading Popper. Like, you know, do you like a file list? Do you like discussing on Curie blog? Do you like reading my essays? Do you like listening to my YouTube videos? Do you like reading RAND? Do you like reading SAWS? Have you tried them? Have you read like the first chapter of several of RAND's books just to get like a sample? Have you opened up a SAWS book and read a chapter or two ever? Have you tried like a couple books? Maybe you'd like the style if you tried it. You know, try a variety of things. Try reading a little Mises. Mises is, um, you know, he's not super easy to read. It depends on the book, though. Like, human action is harder to read than liberalism. But you still might like it. Like, some people are not super into Popper, but they're into economics, because economics is more related to, like, politics, which they're more into. So some people will be interested in that. And if you don't like reading Mises, you could read uh, Henry Hazlitt, Economics in One Lesson. That's a good book. It's important to try to get some sort of understanding of ways your life isn't perfect, things you don't know, um, what some of your problems are, and not just like little practical problems. Like your washing machine is broken, but like more fundamental problems that affect your quality of life and to be making some progress on those things. But it doesn't have to be popular in particular at this time. Popper is just one of the all-time best philosophers.